Ghana has come away with a massive victory, a 2-1 result over Central African Republic, and a match that saw a beautiful strike from a free kick from Mohamed Kudis to equalize this match late on the first half, as well as a late winner from Ernest Nuama and a brilliant assist from Antoine Semenyo in both the players who were late substitutions for the Black Stars. But this match might not have been the most prettiest from the Black Stars of Ghana. It might not have been the best performance. But ultimately, this Ghanaian side went out there and got the job done. And no matter what, ultimately at the end of the day, all in all, they got the three points. And that is all that really matters in qualifications. Yes, they didn't play the most beautiful style of football. Yes, it wasn't the most attractive style. I still don't know what Chris Hutton's tactics are and how he's trying to implement it into this Ghanaian side. And it is very interesting and still very puzzling what he's trying to do here. But ultimately, Chris Hutton's Ghanaian Black Star side got the job done, got the three points, and are advancing to Africa Cup of Nations and ultimately top the group in qualifications and is extremely exciting and is huge it is a huge confidence booster and morale booster moving on to a massive tournament but there's some standout performances here even though it wasn't the most attacking style of football today it wasn't the most pretty match it was still a couple of standout performances Mohamed Kudis got rated man of the match on FootMob, but he wouldn't have been my man of the match. He did finish with a 7.6 match rating and scoring a phenomenal free kick. That free kick from Mohamed Kudis was sensational. Yes, the keeper got his hand to it, but when your keeper's getting his hand to it and it still goes in like that, it is a phenomenal free kick. And he showed his ability from set pieces, and that is going to help the likes of West Ham in the Premier League. But Mohamed Kudis, for me, he was phenomenal today. He was very exciting. He created some chances, but he wasn't my man of the match. My man of the match came off the bench in Antoine Semenyol and even Ernest Nuama. These are two players who I said should have started this match. In my predicted lineup, I had a front four of Mohamed Kudis at the 10 with Nuama off the left, Semenyol off the right, and Inake Williams up top. Only two of those players managed to start. Kudis also did not play at the number 10 like I wanted him to, and he started off the right. And this was very interesting. Seeing Semenyo come on, seeing Nuama, once you saw Semenyo came on six minutes after the likes of Ernest Nuama, the game flipped. The game completely changed. You saw more energy. You saw that more pressing style of football that Antoine Semenyo brings you. You saw that dribbling ability and his hassling ability. The reason that second goal in that winner came was all because of Antoine Semenyo. It's quite obvious and is quite apparent it came from Antoine Semenyo, but the pressing he did on that defender and that fullback to win the ball up the pitch that high up, I get that Central African Republic could have been arguing there for a bit of a foul, but it really wasn't. It was just a great pressing play from Antoine Semenyo, and he really worked like a dog to win that ball back. And it was a beautiful pass, keeping his head keeping his clear mindset and mentality to just square the ball across the box to Ernest Nuama for a great tap-in and a great finish to seal the victory for the Black Stars. And ultimately, it's all that matters. The three points, yes, Ghana weren't pretty, we weren't fantastic, we weren't exciting. Yes, there were still chances, there was still some creativity, but it was nothing that you would have expected from this Ghanaian side. 11 shots, one big chance, two uh, cars, five and one, having 57% possession. It was always going to be apparent that Ghana was going to hold the ball, especially when you are a side that starts from behind so early on the match, giving up a goal so quickly on the 25th minute. That is something I really want to touch on quickly here. I know there's going to be hate on Lawrence uh, Atiziggy, for coming out and rushing out of his goal. But what do you want Lawrence Atiziggy to do there, guys? Do you want him to sit back and just let him have a 1v1 and just stay stature his goal and let the attacker come straight on him? No, it makes no sense. He had to come out and press that ball. If he wins it, fair play. He didn't make himself fully commit to the challenge, which would have ended up in a red card for Lawrence Atiziggy, putting his side even more behind the eight ball. 
He tried. He almost got there. I'm not going to criticize the keeper. Yes, the keeper should have been quicker off his line. Yes, Lawrence Atizegi should have gotten there. But it is still a hard position for a goalkeeper to get to. You also have to look at the center backs a bit there. It was a very interesting to let him have so much room in behind. Lawrence Atizegi, he can be criticized there, but not for rushing out of his goal. You can't criticize a goalkeeper in that sort of situation for rushing out of his goal. He had to rush out of his goal. Or else it would have just been a straight 1v1 and a tap in for the uh, car striker to put that in the back of the goal. Lawrence Atizegi pressed him, but all he can say is he should have been quicker off his line to win that ball. But one of the other standout performances for me was not it wasn't just an attacking on the pitch on Antoine Semenyot, the likes of Mohamed Kudis and Ernest Nuama. You have to look at defensively. Aladu Siedu looked phenomenal. His pace, his recovery ability, and winning a challenge was phenomenal. I love what I saw from him at right back. He is definitely the guy who is going to take over that role from Dennis Odoi now, who is, of course, aging and is moving on in the world of football. You can see he's not what he used to be. And Aladu Siedu looked phenomenal today alongside jo- Joseph Adu. Alexander Jiku didn't really have his best game, but he was still defensively solid. And there's one player I want to talk about specifically. Abdul Baba Rahman. This is a very interesting one. I could see it watching the game. You could hear the boos when he'd be on the ball at points. And you can't do this to a player. You can't boo them. You can't criticize them when they're out there wearing your national crest, when they're out there giving their all. Especially a player like Baba Rahman, who... I personally thought had a very decent game today. I didn't see a true reason why you could go out there and hound him and and hack at him for his performance. Yes, Gideon Mensa came on and still gave a different outlook attacking-wise and still looked very good. But I don't see why you should be attacking Abdel Baba Rahman for his performance today. He looked very decent. He yes, he wasn't phenomenal by any means. But nobody was phenomenal on the pitch for Ghana today outside Semenyo, Aladu, Siedu, and the likes of Ernest Nuama. So why would you hound her in on Baba Roman? I understand he hasn't been great in the past. If there is a deeper reason, I would love to hear it why people are going in on Baba Roman. Because club form, I think he's been doing very well in Greece. And outside of that, if there is an underlying reason that I'm not aware of, I'd love to know why he's getting booed so much. But I thought he was still decent today. I didn't see the reason for him to get a bit of houndering when he was on the ball. But Baba Rahman for me was still very decent. And personally, I don't understand why one of the Ayu brothers is still starting. I can see why Jordan Ayu can get a look in, why Andre Ayu can get a look in. But starting at the 10, it really raises up questions for me. When you got players like Bukhari, Koningsdorfer, when you got players like Ernest Nuama, Kudis, Antoine Semenyo, who's been playing off the right for Bournemouth so much this season, why are you dropping an IU at the number 10 role? Play Kudis there and use your quick, exciting, young, pacey, dribbling, electric, talented wingers that you have. I don't understand what Chris hutton has been doing here. So it's very interesting to see that IUs are still starting. And Aki Williams had one of those graveyard shifts. He didn't really get many chances, not much to truly work with. He made some fantastic runs, some nice interchangeability with the likes of Mohamed Kudis at times, but nothing, nothing truly coming his way. So I don't think there's a reason you should really criticize the likes of Anaki Williams for his performance today. But the lineup was a very interesting choice, guys. I only managed to get the likes of about four or five players correct. With seven exactly correct, as I did lean to a bit more experience with Idrisu, Idrisu Baba starting in the midfield, which never really happened as he did go with Elisha Uwusu. He did go with the likes of Baba Rahman over Gideon Mensa and not starting the likes of Semenyo and Ernest Nuama. Put me behind the eight ball in my predicted lineup, and my predicted score was 2 0 Ghana, but. We'll take the win. We'll take the three points. I said we'd score more than one goal, but I didn't think it would be in that fashion. Let me know what you guys thought on the match today. Make sure to drop a sub, hit that like button, and I'll see what you guys think down below in the comments. And make sure to keep an eye on for the next video, guys. See you for the next one. Peace.